Thank you, Nanette. And thank you uh, for that introduction as well and for having us here. We're really happy to be here. I'm Karina Liljedal and I'm here with my colleague Hannah Bay. We're both from Stockholm Eco School of Economics, as is our co-author Mikael de Leen, professor at Stockholm School of Economics, who unfortunately couldn't join us here today. We're here to talk to, about, about our paper, uh, about the effects of non-stereotyped occupational gender role portrayals in advertisement. And just to show you an example of what might be a stereotype portrayal, um, this is an example. Uh, kindergarten teachers are usually thought of as being female and they're usually portrayed as female kindergarten teachers. Uh, it's much more common in media and advertisements, so it becomes more stereotyped. Now, if you were to compare with a carpenter, most people would think of carpenters as male. Their carpenters are more typically portrayed as male. So if you include a female carpenter in, for example, an advertisement, that would be a non-stereotyped portrayal. We'd like to point out though that there's nothing wrong in portraying a female kindergarten teacher. It's just that in this context, it would become more stereotyped. And the, the stereotyped occupational gender role portrayals, such as the female kindergarten teacher, for example, uh, they're still used very, very frequently in advertising. We actually found some studies showing that it's the most commonly used gender stereotype in advertising. Uh, there are, of course, exceptions. Um, this is uh, the picture you see here uh, of an ad, a recruitment ad for Försvarsmakten, which is the Swedish Armed Forces, uh, is a very good example of a non-stereotyped portrayal uh, of a female soldier uh, used, as, as, as I said, in a recruitment ad. And there are exceptions. Um, these non-stereotyped uh, portrayals are sort of appearing. Not, they're, not, they're still quite unusual, uh, but there are some really good examples and no research before us really <laughs> had studied the effects uh, of these non-stereotype portrayals. Uh, some related research, however, had demonstrated positive effects of avoiding other advertising stereotypes, such as other gender stereotypes and, uh, for example, sexuality stereotypes. And recently there have been some uh, industry initiatives in the advertising industry to try and reduce the use of gender stereotypes in advertising. So we're assuming that the non-stereotype portrayals will become more common. And we thought this was a very good reason to sort of try and study what effects they have mm. on consumers. Yeah, absolutely. Right, and as far as these sort of stereotyped occupational gender role portrayals, what we do know is that they do have some negative effects. Uh, gender stereotypes related to occupational roles, uh, they exist in most of societies, most cultures um, still today. Uh, even really young children know that some occupations are more stereotypically male and some are more stereotypically female. Women are kindergarten teachers and men are, for example, firefighters. And the problem with this is that it has really negative effects. Uh, for example, in terms of limiting career choices for all genders. So even little boys and girls uh, grow up sort of choosing, wanting to be, have different jobs uh, depend, so that that's really uh, affected by these occupational gender role portrayals that we see in the advertising, for example, and the media. Uh, stereotypes are generally uh, contextually and temporally dependent, which means that they depend on what, where we are in the world, which culture we live in, and what time we're in. They do sort of change over time, uh, develop over time, as uh, gender roles change and as occupational roles change. Mm. So they're not static at all. They do change with society. Indeed. Um, and with that, um, as you can see, we, we created two mock-up ads. Uh, we use both real ads and mock-up ads in our studies. Uh, we created these mock-up ads based on firefighters because to date, uh, usually firefighters are still male. Uh, there are female firefighters, but not at all as many as the, the men in the, these departments. Um, these mock-up ads are, and we are totally aware of this, they're really, really simple. Uh, but in the real ads, typically, um, 
two versions are not very similar to each other. And we want to be able to compare simply everything needs to be the same, but we change the stereotype portrayal where in this case, there is a male firefighter with the non-stereotype condition, which then demonstrates a female portrayal. Everything else has to be the same because otherwise we won't be able to um, ensure that there's nothing else that might impact on our results. So that's why we created some of these ads ourselves. And we, in this article, we're reporting the results of three different research studies. Um, they were all limited to studying women portrayed in stereotyped male occupational roles. And the first two studies used real ads. Um, first uh, study with a US sample, second study with a Swedish sample, uh, where we compared responses to real ads featuring men or and, and, and women <laughs> as doctors and soldiers. And the third study, we used these sort of mock-up ads uh, featuring men and women as firefighters. Uh, all studies showed really positive effects, actually, of the non-stereotyped depictions, showing women in sort of male stereotyped occupational roles. And these positive effects, uh, we were able to show that they're due to signaling effects. So we could explain them using signaling theory. And this is a theoretical framework, which includes signaling theory, but we can find that the effects on uh, more favorable brand attitudes actually work through two different routes. Uh, in both cases, we find that the consumers who respond to our service here, uh, they uh, pay more attention to the non-stereotype portrayal. They believe that the brand that has chosen a non-stereotype portrayal, so for example, a female firefighter, they believe that that brand has put in a little bit more of an effort because they could have gone with the stereotype portrayal of a male firefighter, but they chose the female. And they think that if the brand has um, put in that effort, they wouldn't do that unless they were really able. So not only able of creating interesting advertisements, but also able in, for example, producing really good products. So by association, the consumers think that these products will be of higher quality. And of course, then they have more favorable brand attitudes towards uh, a brand of higher product quality. But this also works uh, through brand effort um, in that the consumers who see the non-stereotype portrayals, they actually pay more attention to the person who is portrayed. And they, they look more at this person, they think more about this person, and as such, they form what we call a social connectedness with that person. They feel a little bit closer to the person in the ad. And of course, then they will like the ad a little bit better. So we see more favorable advertisement attitudes and consequently more favorable brand attitudes. Interestingly, it's the same across gender here. No mm -hmm. difference uh, for men and female, uh, men and women. Right, so across genders, and as I as I mentioned, across uh, the different national samples too, mm. across countries and, and and across genders. To summarize, uh, the non-stereotyped occupational gender role portrayals uh, that we studied, uh, these women as firefighters and so forth, had positive ad and brand effects, uh, also positive effects on perceived product quality. Uh, these positive effects could be explained by signaling effects the signaling theory, uh, but also um, the non-stereotype portrayals have some positive social effects in terms of increased social connectedness with the people portrayed in the ads. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting because in advertising research, um, there, there's a lack of studies measuring social effects. So, mm -hmm. it's, it was, we're, we're really happy to be able to demonstrate some positive social effects of using these non-stereotyped portrayals in advertising. Mm, absolutely. And as far as, as I said, if, if for future research directions where our research stops and where hopefully other research will continue, um, we would really like to see some studies of portrayals of men in female stereotype job roles, uh, because we limited our studies to studying only women in male stereotype job roles. Uh, we would also like to see these ads studied in other cultural contexts, as I mentioned, um, we only studied, uh, we used the US, UK and Swedish samples mm -hmm. in this. And we were really interesting to see these ads and how they perform in other cultures, which are maybe more different from, from the ones we studied. 
in our research. It would be also very interesting to see some more intersectional ad portrayals, uh, that is ads trying to combine several stereotypes because we really try to isolate um, the occupational role gender stereotypes in, in these ads. So it'd be really interesting to see these non-stereotype portrayals combined with, for example, other gender stereotypes and, uh, well, for example, age stereotypes. Mm. That would be really interesting to see. Right, well, thank you very much uh, for having us here today uh, again. And uh, we really look forward to your feedback on our research.